In today's session of parallel programming, we will be moving on to unit 3. And the first topic which we will be dealing in today's session is CPU and a GPU as accelerated platform and uh, what is a GPU thread engine. In unit 1, we have covered the basics of parallel computing, what are the benefits and what approaches we use, what strategies we follow. And having seen uh, how the parallelism can be implemented to some extent on a CPU, now we'll totally move on to the next auxiliary device, which is nothing but your GPU. As we all know, when you see the CPU and a GPU system, you already know that CPU is not CPU is the main computing part of a system which will do all your processing, right? Now Additional to the CPU which is present to the system, we have a GPU and this GPU stands for Graphical Processing Unit. The main intention of uh, in developing this processing unit was to work on the image related applications. So later on, uh, later on, we are nowadays using even for the scientific applications where you have huge amount of calculations to be done. So basically, when you go for this GPU, GPU is nothing but a device which will be acting in support to your CPU. And this GPU will not work alone. You need to have an intervention of your CPU with that of a GPU. So when you go for this particular GPU, you can call this as a supporting device or you can even call this as an accelerator device. Accelerator device is nothing but which will help the CPU in speeding up the application. So in order to improve the speed up of your system, you attach an additional device that is nothing but your GPU. When we go for this GPU, we have different types of it. One we call it as integrated GPU, the other we call it as discrete GPU. Discrete GPU is also known as dedicated GPU. So when you go for integrated GPU, you have a CPU and GPU is also an embedded on the same socket of this particular processor. So since it is present along with the GPU, you call this as integrated. Nowadays, most of the laptops are having integrated GPUs built within the CPU. And here, this integrated GPU is basically used for some scientific calculations uh, or uh, Windows applications or browsing applications where you want more amount of uh, calculations to be done in less amount of time. And we even have a dedicated GPU where you have a separate GPU to this. You can just attach another device which we call it as a GPU. So this is a dedicated GPU and each of the CPU and GPU will have their, their own memory for storing the data. And this is basically used for your video processing or image processing applications in order to get the required amount of data or feature extraction uh, applications, all those things. Now we'll see having seen a CPU and the types of the GPU here. Now we'll move, uh, now we'll see how the communication is actually done between a CPU and a GPU. Now when you just see this diagram, this is a discrete GPU or you call it as a dedicated GPU where you have a separate CPU and the GPU device and CPU has its own memory and uh, CPU has its own memory and for the connection to establish a com communication between your CPU and the GPU you have an interface which we call it as PCI bus. So PCI bus here is nothing but your peripheral component interface. So peripheral component interface will act as a link between your CPU as well as your GPU. So when you want a GPU to perform some operations, so the instructions will be given by the CPU to the GPU. GPU will perform the operations and based on the data provided and it stores the result in the RAM and at the same time the result is sent back to the CPU. As I've been telling you from the starting, GPU alone will not work. So CPU has to give an instruction. So what instruction to be executed and the input will be provided by the CPU to the GPU. Later on, based on the instruction and the input, it, GPU will only perform your operation and the result will be sent again back to your CPU. So this is how the communication takes place between your CPU and your GPU. And for this, 
PCI bus plays a major important role in transferring the data, either the input or the output uh, to and forth between your CPU and the GPU. Now, uh, we have been see, saying that GPU acts as an accelerator device in support to your CPU and improves your speed up. How it is done actually? And when you go for CPU, it has uh, multiple processing elements which has the capability of performing the operations parallelly. So when I say when you are operating parallelly, you need to have multiple threads, right? So each particular processing element will be executing one thread simultaneously and all the threads will be executed. So in order to perform the operations among all the processing elements by means of the thread, you need to have some uh, component which will take care of the synchronization. So that we call it as a thread engine. So thread engine will support the multiple threads and make them work parallelly. And coming to this components of the thread engine, you need to compulsory have infinite number of threads because GPU will have thousands of cores. And nowadays we even have lakhs of cores here. And all these cores have to operate parallelly. So in order to operate them parallelly, you need to have thousands of threads. And in order to manage these thousands of threads, you need to have a thread engine. And zero cost time for switching. So when you when I say that thousand threads are being operating parallelly, from one thread uh, you are executing in T1. Some you sometimes you may require the data from thread two. So you need to stop working on T1 and jump on to T2. So this normally we call it as context switching. So this switching will be done in such a way that you will not be incurring more amount of time or the cost here. And because of this particular feature of zero time cost here, latency hiding of memory access. What do you mean by latency hiding? Latency hiding is nothing but whenever I want the data from the memory, this is your memory and this is the core. And core is performing some operation and it requires the data from the memory. So for this requisition, it takes some amount of time for the data to be retrieved from the memory. So that you call it as latency, the time required for getting the data. So since the switching time is very less, so you even go for hiding your memory access, meaning that you are able to get the data in less amount of time from the memory. Now, when we having seen the GPU and how the thread engine, so thread engine is basically used for managing your threads. Now we'll see the internal architecture of a GPU, what all it contains. Now this is a dedicated GPU, you have your CPU and this we can even call it as a host. And this we, this we consider it as a GPU, so total thing is your GPU. And here the GPU is having two compute devices. So GPU internally has two compute devices. So this compute device is nothing but a sub part of your GPU which helps in performing your operation. You can call it as a sub part, you can even call it as a sub slice of the GPU. So here I'm taking an example of a GPU with two compute devices, compute device one and compute device two. And this particular compute device, I mean, when you go for this compute device, internally it has multiple compute units. So these are your different compute units, which are this, you can even call them as processing elements. Compute units are also known as processing elements or you can even call them as core, which has the capability of performing an operation. So this, all these compute units will be performing the operation simultaneously. Now, how do you decide which compute unit has to perform which particular operation? So CPU will first assign the work to the GPU. So it can be either given to compute device one and compute device two. So assume the work is assigned to compute device one. So it will be given to your workload distributor and this workload distributor in turns distributes the work to each and every compute unit present here. So each of the unit will perform the operation and the result will be again sent back to your workload distributor in turn to your compute device and finally from the compute device to your CPU. This is how the processing will be done. Now, when we move on to the compute unit, as I told you, each of this compute unit will internally have the processing elements. So GPU will have a compute device, right? And this compute device will have a compute unit. 
and each of the compute unit we have multiple cores and that multiple cores we call it as processing elements so this is a diagram related to a single compute unit this is your single compute unit where it has multiple cores or the processing elements so if you could see you have these many uh, cores present here so you require that many threads to be assigned to each core so that each core will perform an operation so instead of a single processor you are going for multiple cores which has the capability of performing an operation and each of the compute unit will have its own local memory its own primary memory and as we have seen you need to have a thread scheduler to decide which thread what will a cpu scheduler does it assigns a job right similarly the thread scheduler will take care of which particular work or which particular thread is to be assigned to which particular processing unit so let me just uh, give an overview gpu is as an auxiliary device which contains a compute device compute device internally contains compute unit and compute unit in turn contains multiple cores or processing elements where the threads are executed parallelly now when you see the terminology here uh, you normally we call it as a cpu right so at the so other side of it this is a cpu but when i go for a gpu we have a compute device or you can even call it as a gpu GPU. These are the different uh, manufacturers. OpenCL, Open Computing Language, Advanced AMD stands for Advanced Micro Device. Advanced Micro Device. And we even have NVIDIA. It is another manufacturer, and you have Intel. So you can even call it as a compute device or a GPU. And uh, the other name. What is a what do you have in your uh, GPU or a compute device? You have a compute unit. so you can call it as compute unit or streaming processor streaming multi processor or a sub slice and each of the compute unit will have a processing element present here and processing element the other name for your processing element can be core compute cores cuda cores or execution units and each of this processing element will work on a, a process operation right so you can call this as a work item or in normal terminology we call them as a thread so these are the different names given to that particular item and ultimately you have a vector the same thing is known as a vector in all the remaining terminologies except in nvidia and intel we call them as simt wrap single instruction multiple threads single instruction multiple data and coming to this having seen a cpu and the gpu internal organization of your gpu and you want to know the speed up of a gpu how much speed i mean how much fast it is executing it for that we go for calculating peak theoretical flops flops here stands for floating point operations so when you go for your floating point operations here this is nothing but your clock rate at which rate uh, your clock frequency is executing into the number of compute units you have in your gpu into the processing units processing units into flops per cycle so this will give you the total amount of theoretical flops which will give you the speed up of a gpu